Your balls will thank you. Gentlemen. Your balls will thank you. Talking Fight Club. Your balls will thank you. Gentlemen. Your balls will thank you. Gentlemen. 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 Your balls will Talk thank you. Fight Club. Better than the stress of saying less about less. Your balls will thank you. You're essentially on the national reserves. You're, you're, you're ready to be drafted at any time. And to give you an idea of what those underlying conditions were, their lung disease, cancer, immunodeficiency, heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease. These are not minor underlying conditions. These are death-inducing underlying conditions. So it was what they were admitting is that almost nobody was dying from COVID-19 directly by itself. That they were dying from COVID-19 may have been a triggering factor, may not have been a triggering factor. We won't know in, in time. We may never know because of the way the data was encouraged to be manipulated by the, the incentives that were created. But when we look at the underlying numbers, if you were told, hey, by the way, and throughout the entire month of March, only 14 people died in New York City with no underlying conditions even attributed to COVID-19, would that be a reason to panic? No. That's why that data was mostly repressed by the institutional media. In the same context, we have a real-life comparison and analogy to Sweden. Imperial College predicted that Sweden would have 60,000 deaths by now and 100,000 deaths before summer. They, unless they did what the Imperial College they demanded they do, which was shut down their civil society and shut down their economy, impose these arbitrary social distancing tests and limits. Well, we'll take a look at what Sweden actually did. We look at chart number 10. It recorded the degree of social activity based on phone activity. The bottom left has Sweden's chart, and you can see Sweden stayed up in the red. Sweden kept on being active and active and active. It continued to be out and about. They tracked and traced phone activity and were able to see that Sweden maintained the same level of social activity publicly that they normally did, if anything, even more than normal during this time period when everyone else was shutting down and their social activities was shrinking dramatically. So what happened in Sweden? Well, let's take a look at chart number 11. The number of daily reported COVID-19 cases adjusted per million population between the United Kingdom and Sweden. We see the United Kingdom before the lockdown occurred. Sweden had a worse outbreak than the United Kingdom. Sweden is in Stockholm. It's a major travel location. It has a large immigrant population. So Sweden had a bigger problem prior to the lockdown in the United Kingdom than the United Kingdom did. But after the lockdown, guess whose problem got worse? The United Kingdom's problem got worse. The United Kingdom's excess death rate went up. The number of confirmed cases went up. The number of COVID deaths per million went up compared to Sweden, which actually saw a pattern. If we look at chart number 12, we see Sweden sort of goes up and down and ultimately starts to flatline, uh, whereas the UK continually was worse than Sweden after it shut down than Sweden was before. Indeed, they've made adjustments uh, and similar adjustments across the states in the United States. Someone did a comparison of what they call the RO. The RO is the amount of reproduction rate of a spread of a virus, a replication rate of the virus. So if, if a person can spread it to two people or more, they call that RO 2.0. Only one person, 1.0. Go with most viruses to get it uh, as low as possible. Well, if we look at the national RO and we compare it to, say, New York and California versus states that shut down later, like Florida and Tennessee, states that never shut down, like Iowa and Arkansas, and include Sweden in that map, what we see is that, in fact, those places that never shut down uh, either experienced a better or comparable result in reducing the spread rate and transmission rate of the virus throughout this entire one-month time period. So they're all basically going down together. The shutdown didn't produce any degree of decline when the countries and states that did not shut down saw the same or better rate of decline of the spread of the virus. It's like going in the fucking twilight zone. Like, everyone here is okay with this. Look, the only way I can kind of put this into context for everybody is, and this is going to be kind of an extreme example, this is like really the only thing I can come up with, it's like if we were in Nazi Germany and they were like taking the Jews to go put them in a gas chamber, I'm the one like there saying, hey, this is not good. This is bad. This is wrong. We should not be doing this. And then everyone tells me, hang in there. You're doing a great job. You can't save everybody. You're, you know, you're amazing. You're a great nurse. Guys, I know I'm a fucking good nurse. I know I go in there and I give it 500% every day. I know I'm not being negligent. Okay, I fucking know that. What I need is someone to help me save these people from being killed. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. 
the defense of the West ultimately rests not only on means, but also on the will of its people to prevail and be successful and get what you have to have. The fundamental question of our time is whether the West has the will to survive. Do we have the confidence in our values to defend them at any cost? Do we have enough respect for our citizens to protect our borders? Do we have the desire and the courage to preserve our civilization in the face of those who would subvert and destroy it? Well, I say thank you because they're taking their time to learn the truth and then they can spread it on to other people so everyone can be informed of what's going on around us. There's so much information here that it also draws us to the table. Everyone's going to come and learn more information and they're going to see other facts, not just about the swine flu. A mass resistance will foil their plan. So uh, that's why we're out here on the street uh, trying to spread the word. Uh, I'm personally contacting everyone on my list. Uh, I think that's a, a good idea for people to do who are aware. Just contact your entire list. And um, I think uh, we should start um, a postering campaign. I think we should have masses of people putting up posters everywhere so everyone will notice. You can't miss it anymore. Stop by, grab a fly, say hi, I got a question or two, bet we both know why, the media lies, ain't that a shame, but you got half a brain, don't play guessing games, don't just guess, that's why we in a mess, skit so frantic, lies full of stress, no need to panic, we know who's blessed, we lied in public, but you scared to confess, so we got the answers, the truth versus cancer, walk, run a bike, in your nights, no chance for a cure, see who's sure why we don't get the answers, you just want to be us, so you think you can dance. Okay, children, Lord knows we're wailing To move through crack like your favorite villains Chilling while we're skilling, so have no fear It's my block, your block, block party We're on the streets now, we're on the streets now We're on the streets now, and we never gonna stop We're on the streets now, we're on the streets now We're on the streets now, and we never gonna stop We're on the streets now, we're on the streets now We're on the streets now, we're on the streets now And, and the, what they have in common is that these students realized that they were lied to. Nixon said he was going to stop the war. Instead, he escalated it with a secret war. We realize we've been lied to. We realize that our lives are at stake. These people are going to be sent off to Vietnam to die for a political agenda based on a lie. But now you've got people, middle class, middle aged business owners who are out there. And instead of a bunch of amateur National Guard troops, you've got the militarized police who've been told that they can shoot first. If they're fearful, they'll have their backs covered. And this is going to start a revolution. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have to have people at. Here's what By I think. By the way, we're not acting tough up here. I'm just telling you, the veterans, everybody, are, are, are just ready. They're tired of it. They've tried to fix things peacefully. We've really put up a lot of crap. We've been censored, everything else, and people are just really getting serious I, I think the solution alex is we've got to have constitutional sheriffs we've got to have constitutional mayors councilmen and so forth it's got to be done say, at hey, the you, local you've level. got sanctuary cities where they let the right. illegal aliens or whatever how about sanctuary cities for the second amendment and businesses and everything's open and we say screw you and then and then and then see well, the who has the better numbers like brazil and like sweden that didn't do all this and have the lowest numbers and where we say we're still red-blooded america we'll call it america zones that's right hey this yeah. is still america you go to your blue cesspit with the homeless and the needles and the perverts and the pedophiles and you go there and you fail but you they're trying to suck us all down into an american bankruptcy so we have to bail their blue cesspits out that's right you know when we talk about co posse comitatus right what was that the power of the community right you know westerns you got the posse gets behind the sheriff when there's a necess necessity to do that and we've got a lot of constitutional sheriffs who said look i'm not going to arrest what's somebody a posse who's in, is it posse the people in latin yeah posse is power comitatus is the community so it's the power of the community that's where we can stop this. That's the only place we can stop this. The state governments, you can't count on that. Yeah, if the federal government wants to rally on. their mob to destroy America, we'll rally the American people. And they know it. That's right. But we want to be careful and not be violent about it, because you talked about that. They want right. to trigger something like Michigan. Right. I understand why they did it, but they're trying to say they're all Nazis for saying that she's a Nazi, the, the governor. But that woman looks totally psychotic. I don't know who's scarier, her, Admiral Akbar. We'll be right back. Final segment, then your phone calls and other people who are first in line to get a mandatory uh, swine flu shot 
uh, they'll refuse knowing that the public supports them and the public mood is against vaccines. So we're here. We want to talk to everybody. You took the shot. You're fine. That's obviously evidence. Um, and uh, any other thoughts about this? I mean, would you recommend the shot to others? How's your sister feeling? Uh, yeah, she's doing fine, and I feel that, you know, I think, it, I think it's great. I mean, it's not hurting me, so it's okay. hurting me. It's got to be helping. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you one little thing here. It's just a small piece of paper with some information, and it has uh, people who question the vaccines. We're not used to having these conversations. They often turn into arguments. So just take a little piece of paper like this, fold it in half, hand it to someone and say, look, congratulations, you're having a kid or whatever. This is a bit of important information that you need to look into on your own as a responsible adult, as a responsible parent to be, or as a responsible parent right now with a child, or as a responsible adult who's concerned about their own health. You do need to look into the other side of the vaccine issue, but if we don't talk about it much on a regular basis, and you don't know much about it, and I don't even know much about it, but I do know that this information is compelling because I took a look at it, then I'm going to pass it on to you in this fashion. Uh, because here, where we are not supposed to talk about these things, according to who? Well, the World Health Organization and other international groups and others setting the... Uh, the barometer of our culture. We need to find a way to get around that in a non-confrontational, educational, and compassionate way. And that's what we're trying to do here with TorontoTruthSeekers.com every Saturday. Peace. You are watching a master. Yeah! Yeah! Enough turning you to murder you. This is what the fuck I do. you I'm sorry. Ow! Why the ear, man? Oh, hot. Get up. Oh, oh that was perfect. some type of a solution for me because I'm kind of out of ideas. You know, when I try and talk with some of the other nurses here and they're like, well, you can't save everybody. And they all know what's happening. They all agree with me and they all just shake their heads and I'm like, am I the only one? Who is not a sociopath? Stop! You weren't alive anywhere like you were there. 
but Fight Club only exists in the hours between when Fight Club starts and when Fight Club ends. Even if I could tell someone they had a good fight, I wouldn't be talking to the same man. Who you were in Fight Club is not who you were in the rest of the world. A guy came to Fight Club for the first time, his ass was a wad of cookie dough. After a few weeks, he was carved out of wood. <laughs>